Hello and welcome to How Do I Blender Audio. This is done by somebody who is completely new at Blender and has no idea what he's doing. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do it correctly. First I'm going to open up Blender from fresh. I've got Blender um, 2.49a. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, SR4, that's sequence, um, then I'm going to add an audio track. Go to Audio HD, and I'm going to go to where I've got my little thingy stored. You can go up in files by hitting this little P button here, which makes absolutely no sense. Should just be like an up arrow instead of P, which doesn't stand for anything. C User Teraflop Desktop Josh's Music, who's not me. Uh, Christmas Gaming CD, and I'll just choose this one. Uh, I'm LMBing to select this. You don't want to RMB to select it. Then you hit Select Audio HD. And make sure you're doing that one and not the RAM. Then I'm just moving this around. I haven't clicked anything after I did that. And then I'm putting it down by hitting, clicking LMB. Boom. It's put in place. Then you zoom out by scrolling downwards to scroll out and give you a view of the entire track that you've got. So this is a wave. I think you can do it with mp3s, I don't know. Uh, so, first thing I need to show you how to do is something that's really, really stupid and basic. I need to know how to move this back in the timeline. By the way, this is the timeline that I put it into, and this will tell you it um, globally. Like, this is actual units of time, and these are frames, they aren't seconds, I don't think. I don't, I don't know. Are they are they frames or seconds? I think they're I think they're seconds. Yeah, because this one's moving faster. So this is this is actually uh, this middle one is showing it in seconds. This one is showing it in frames, and this one is showing it relative to the track that you've got selected. Uh, so I want to move this track backwards so it's starting like halfway through it. So I'm gonna um, RMB it. You can tell it's selected if it's a darker color. This means it's not selected, which makes absolutely no sense. This makes it look like it's selected, but it's not. It's it's not selected right now. Um, and by the way, you can deselect everything by hitting the A button, and you can select everything by hitting the A button. Selected A, deselected A. Select, deselect, select, deselect, 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 select. Um, now I'm going to move it around, so I RMB, and I hold it. I don't let go of it. And you see if I'm moving it up and down here, these are channels. Um, and that means just everything gets put on its own little channel. Uh, like for example, right now it's on guess this is this is channel zero one two three four five six so everything is on its own channel and then when you when you go to export it later they get uh, mixed down to one big channel and one big file so I'm starting halfway through it uh, I still have the RMB held down I'm letting go of RMB I can still move it around um, I'm moving it backwards in time forwards in time and then I put it down by hitting LMB just clicking it see now it's starting halfway through it uh, I want to play it. And this took me two hours to figure out how to do this, to figure out how to play it back. So here's how you play it back. Um, you hit Alt A. See? It's, uh, uh, this bottom, see these numbers that are scrolling down, like below the two, below the two there, um, those are showing your frames per second, not showing your frames. See that one there? That means RMB. That makes that makes a lot of sense. Double RMB to stop. It should just have a big stop button there, but it doesn't. Um, the other way to get the track to play back is playback animation in all sequences here. Um, that's the short way to do it because they don't have a button for you to just playback animation and everything. You have to dig through the menus. Okay, so it's playback again. Um, what else do I want to show you? Um, in order to get the start to offset a different way, like say I just don't even want to have this back back here, I can kind of, I, I, I guess it's hiding it or something, but basically there's another way to get it to start later, and that's um, click this arrow at the end, hold it down, hold RMB down, drag it, and then let it go, uh, let it go, and then LMB. So it's the same way that you're selecting everything, and I think you can do the same thing with the end. Like, say I want it to end sooner than it actually is supposed to. 
I do the same thing. I R and B hold, drag, and then L and B to put it down. Uh, so that's the uh, that's the main thing over here in the I I IPO. I don't know what that stands for. They don't tell me. I don't know what this FAC thing stands for. I guess it's maybe factor or faction or something. Uh, but this, see these little numbers here on the left. These uh, show the percentage of the volume of the track. Like zero is it's muted, and one means it's 100%, which means it's fully on. And if I zoom out here by scrolling down, you can see that that's the one. That's the one right there, and that'll mean it's it's all the way up. Uh, let's say I want it to. Um, oh, and by the way, these numbers are here on the bottom. 100 means the end of the track. Zero means the start of the track. So um, as soon as yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It shouldn't be able to go past the beginning of the thing. Oh well. Uh, zero means the start of the track. 100 means the end of the track. And 50 means whatever's halfway through your track. I don't know if there's a way to um, lock it down, so it's just you know doing the same thing as the frames here, like and it's not it's not percentage based. Um, I I think maybe I get I don't know I I have no idea how to make it do that. Uh, I think it's maybe IPO frame locked that makes it locked to this thing, you know? So it's like doing the regular frames per second instead of some weird percentage based thing. But if I want to uh, make it be 0% completely muted at the start of the thing, I'm going to control and then LMB. And that puts this little white dot here um, on the IPO curve, and that means it's completely muted at the start of the song. Okay. Uh, Actually, I don't know if it's the start of the song. It might be, let's see, it might be at the start of the time, like where the, where the track actually starts playing. Because see, I've got got it grayed out. Because otherwise, it would be way back here. Um, yeah. So I put down. It means it's going to be muted for the entire thing, unless I put another little control note down. So I'm gonna put one down, um, ten percent of the way through where the track starts, uh, at 100% volume. See, it's going to go like that. And I can edit these and do all kinds of other stuff with it, but I don't want to because I want to show you how to put another control point beyond that. This is going to make it play at 200% volume if I put one right there. And this is going to absolutely make no sense because it's already muted. It can't be less than muted. It shouldn't let you do anything below 0% volume. You can't have anything less than silence. It makes no sense. <sighs> so, halfway through the track, it's going to be at about 1% volume. Uh, let's say I want to select all of these and move them around so this entire graph is at a different place. I'm going to hit A. That selects all the nodes. Now I R and B hold, release it, I can still move it around, and then plop it down where I want to put it. Let's say I want to move all these little variations towards the end of the track. Now it's put down. All the nodes uh, and stuff are moved towards the end. Uh, I deselect everything. Let's say I want more control over it. Let's say I'm in a really sharp thing instead of this little curvy bazier you know, little curvy sine curve thingy. I hit tab. I can now select each one of these individual things and 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 yes, I can select the little end handle and make it all kinds of do all kinds of, you know, sharp drop offs or more of a curve or more subtle or stuff like that. And I can also select the middle one, hopefully. Yes. I can select the middle one and make it be all sorts of different places. And then I just L and B to plop it down. <laughs> so um that's that's also what I can do with it. Let me show you another thing. Um, if you go to mix down, it's going to create a wave from the sequence audio and it goes to render output ter, ter directory. Why do they have to abbreviate everything? Why can't they just say directory? It'll make a long sentence, but it's easier to understand. They have to abbreviate everything. Um, you click that and it's going to put it in a s in a secret place because you can't see it because it's not listed here because they want everything to be obscure and hard to find. Uh, so I click this button over here. It's a sequencer. It's the no. It's the render button. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Um, and it shows you the output is at temp. So if I go to temp, and I'm not going to right now because I can't find it because it's hard to find. And it takes forever to find. Instead of just like saying, "Do you want to open it?" Yes, I want to open. <sighs> but it's it's the, in this case it's C temp, and you'll see a WAV file that's in there. Um, and that's that'll just give me a total mix down of all the stuff that's in there. Hopefully, this is still getting recorded. Uh, scrub. Scrub lets me drag this drag this along unevenly until Blender crashes. Watch, it'll crash. Yeah, see, crash, dead. 
So this concludes our tutorial on how to audio with